Hello guys, you are joining me very early on Friday morning, it is Friday the 5th of July and I just thought I would jump on here just to kind of do more of a check-in video today. I haven't got huge amounts of like knitting progress to show you but I thought I would update you on a little bit more spinning, I thought I'd update you actually on some knitting that I'm undoing. Yeah, it's going to be more of a check-in video and quite short. I hope you guys have had a really, really good week. I hope you've got to lots of making. I hope you've had some good weather. I just hope you've had all the good things. <laughs> I've got a massive cup of coffee. And yeah, I'm just uh, sitting down, taking a moment to pause and enjoy my knitting before quite a busy day and quite a busy weekend. So yeah, really glad to be here with you guys. Um, so I don't know who else has been watching the Tour de France or following along with the Tour de Fleece. I think I said in the last video that I would try and join a team, but I realised the way that my calendar looks over the course of the Tour de France. I just don't know if I'd be able to commit to it in the way that I would like. Um, I just, I don't even have, it's not even like I can consistently watch the highlights every evening. Um, so I haven't officially joined a team. But I am following along, I'm really enjoying it, I'm enjoying the hashtags and yeah, I am, I am doing quite a lot of spinning. So I think in the last episode I showed you this as a finished object. This is a Merino Cheviot blend and I got 39 grams and 85 meters for a kind of two ply on my drop spindle. Well since then my little Nano has arrived unplugged at the moment hence the cable hanging down i'm so in love guys um this is the second um model of the nano the nano 2 and there's definitely some upgrades compared to um videos i've seen on people using their nanos um so the clips are a little bit different um it's got kind of little sucky feet on the bottom to hold it steady it's quite quiet um yeah, so far so good. Oh, I think they've also changed the the way the bobbins work. So the bobbin ends now screw on rather than push on. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. And on the Nano, I have made the Nano arrived on Tuesday. And I have spun. Uh, no, I lie, that's not on the Nano. I've spun this. This is a big top that I got about 100 grams of uh, a little while back. I've spun some of it on my drop spindle and yeah, I spun this on day four and five of the Tour de Fleece. This is a multi-fibre blend but I know it's got silk in it and it's got lots of kind of nips in it. Um, so I got 62.2 metres per 35 grams. So this is kind of a heavy decay to, to worsted weight yarn really there are sections of it that are probably more like a kind of sport to dk weight but on average it's pr it's pretty consistent i'm actually really happy with it and i'm definitely finding i think i spoke in the last video about you know would i find the nano easier to control how much spin i'm putting in and and how i'm plying it and the answer is most definitely yes so i'm really really pleased about that whilst i was waiting for the nano to arrive on um I don't know if I've actually put the day of the tour on this one, but whilst waiting for the to arrive, I did this little nugget. I don't know if that's going to show up. There we go. Um, this was actually on the drop spindle. This is some leftover merino top that is actually meant for um, felting, like felt, um, needle felting, but I really love the colour. I did this on my drop spindle, uh, 38.6 metres for kind of 12 to 13 grams. So this is essentially like a kind of sport weight. It'd be about 292 metres um, per 100 grams. So yeah, really happy with that. So loads of spinning. Sorry guys, I'm playing with my hair because I, I really wasn't lying when I said I've literally rolled out of bed, made a coffee and thought I'd jump on here. So, you know, you're quite literally hanging out with me for my morning coffee. <laughs> Um, so that's the kind of spinning related stuff. I'm going to sip of coffee and then I'll chat to you a little bit about some knitting. I just love this mug. It's about as big as my face. I got these from Ikea like probably about 10 years ago and they, I have two of them and they came with like a big saucer to match. Um, and I just loved them. And then 
I was in like a kind of shared house um, just after I'd left uni and when I went to move out one of them was missing so I only have one of my really big mugs but I love them okay so um project that I have probably worked on the most I'd say I haven't picked up my knitting as much in the last seven days as I normally would have it's not because I've been like off my knitting or anything it's just just not how it's happened <laughs> but I have picked up um my chroma sweater so we've picked up a sleeve now I've got a kind of interesting interesting convo to have around picking up sleeves and and needle size for sleeves and pick up braids and stuff so as you can kind of see at the moment this is kind of going down the shoulder then ballooning out slightly and then tapering down this sleeve looks really short but just remember this is a really big drop shoulder so I'm hoping this is going to block out nice and straight that's my hope I don't really know how to show you this that's my hope is I'm going to kind of block it out straight <clears throat> but um I've done this on two jumpers recently, so I'll show you my terracotta sweater in a minute. I, I have never, ever had to go down a needle size for my sleeves. I know some people, that's their kind of routine, because um, if you're knitting it on a smaller circumference circular needle, your tension can change. But mine, I don't know, I've just never had to do that, ever. Um, and I have done kind of picked up stitches on a kind of drop shoulder before. So I don't know whether my tension's changed or if it's like the pickup rate I'm using, um, but yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. If I have to rip these sleeves back, if they don't block out properly, then it's not gonna be the end of the world because they're pretty short. I mean, look at that. Um, but let me talk you through kind of what I've done color-wise. So I think on the last episode, I had done the top up here and I had joined the shoulders. Um, I think I forgot to mention the pattern calls for a flat three needle bind off and I didn't do this I just did a standard three needle bind off because I quite like the seam it creates and I also think it makes a bit more sense of you can probably see them pretty well they show up more on camera than they do in person but you can see the little bumps where I have um resolved the the um German short rows yeah don't know if I love it. I mean, as I say, I think it, it's showing up more on camera than it does in person, but I felt like the seam then made more sense of that was my my thinking. Um, so as you can kind of see, I've kind of picked up both sleeves. I kind of did them concurrently because I've been playing a real game of yarn chicken with my colour palette. But I have gone for my, what I concluded with, because I really wasn't sure what I was going to do, because I knew I didn't have enough to like fully colour block and do the same on both sides. So I've done, continued, this is uh, Thunderstorm, which is one of my colourways on my natural DK base. I've done a stripe of that, then I think three rounds of the Merino Skewer, then 12 rounds of Merino Skewer's Coal, then a one round of the Merino Skewer White, then 12 of the um, Sun Has Gone Perfect in this kind of chestnut colourway, and then I've done one of the Merino Skewer, and then I've finished it off in the Sun Has Gone Perfect colour that I started the body on does that make sense so i've got the stripes on the sleeves those are going to then match the two pockets that are going on the front so we've kind of gone more stripey than i'd intended but i think it's going to look quite good and what i really wanted with the sleeves was i really wanted to make sure they were actually quite fitted um i didn't want them sitting too wide on my arms because i'm picturing this jumper as being the kind of jumper that i throw on on a morning like today it's wet it's cold to sit and have coffee in i'm picturing actually dying in it if i'm honest and like doing things like cooking and stuff where i don't want my sleeves getting in the way um i think this is just gonna be a really cozy throw on piece so that's the plan there so i'll keep you guys posted on the blocking and whether or not i have to redo the sleeves if so i probably will go down a needle size but keep the same pickup rate and see how we do there okay so the other thing I have been doing, we'll keep on the same topic of the sleeves. This is going to be inside out, but you guys can get the idea. So this is another sleeve that I've picked up in the last, what, what, few weeks. And um, it's done the same thing. It's just like wildly too big. This one I could predict a little bit more because the body of the sweater has got texture and colour work, which draws it in as gauge wise. Whereas the sleeve I'm knitting in plain stockinette. So yeah, it's just too big. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to rip the sleeve off. And then I'm going to go back in, I'm going to do a double folded neck band for the collar and then I'm actually going to just finish the armholes off with um, a small, uh, not very deep rib 
and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to extend the rib on the bottom of the body and I'm going to redo that and I'm going to make this a slip over kind of um, sleeveless vest is what I'm going to do because I think I will wear it a decent amount in that format and <coughs> excuse me given that I was just going to do the sleeves in plain stockinette I don't think it makes much difference so that's the plan with the terracotta sweater my hope was actually to have done that before this video but you know that's just not how it goes so that's fine um, but we are beginning, as you can kind of see guys, we are beginning to get through some of these longer term whips. The other one that is on my mind is my summer top, which I have made progress on this week. Again, not enough for it to look different really to show here. The other one is my big love cardigan. That's the other thing that's kind of on my needles that is kind of on my brain that's been on there for a long time. And then my Maggie cardigan, which I haven't picked up in this last week, but obviously I made huge progress on quite quickly. I think I might take that on the train with me. I'm heading off to the city over the course of the weekend, so I might take that with me. And then I have actually cast on something new uh, this week. It's something very small, but I was chatting with a friend who um, has very kindly offered to kind of work with me to kind of style some photographs for my yarn. And we were kind of talking through what kind of different samples we might need and. Yeah, basically I'm knitting up a little hair tie in my chili jam colorway. I'm not following a pattern. I know some of the designers have released like patterns for scrunchies and little bows and stuff. I'm not following one of those. I've just cast on three stitches, increased up to 16 stitches with a little two stitch eye cord knit on edge as I go. And then I'm just knitting straight and then I will just do the equivalent taper on the other end. And yeah. This is where we're up to. Um, but I'm really excited by this idea. I think like the, for me, this is a whole another dimension to the creativity of kind of knitting and yarn is is how you then photo like photograph it. And I'm definitely getting more into that. There was a while where I kind of felt it was a bit of a chore, but now I'm, I'm really quite excited by the ideas of like what's possible. So yeah, really, really excited about that. But yeah, the only other thing to say, guys, is that I am busy prepping and planning uh, a new project. Um, I know that sounds silly when I've got so many on the needles, but you know what we're like. So um, I am trying to put together a video that takes you through the whole process with me of like selecting these colours and the whole process of knitting this particular project. I think that'd be really fun. Um, but just to kind of give you guys a bit of a preview, essentially when I got my whole stash out, I laid it out on the bed. I was just sorting through it all and um, when I did that I realised that I actually have kind of yarns that could go together for a strange brew steaked cardigan so I have basically like grouped all those scraps together in this little basket I'm going to do a background colour of grey and I'm going to fade from various different two plies I've got from different brands um, so the grey background is going to fade itself and then I've got like a kind of gradient, um, colour gradient that will fade one to the other um, for the colour work and I'm going to do it all over colour work is the plan. So yeah, we've got some exciting knitting plans on the horizon. I wish I could take this with me this weekend because I'm very excited by this project but I think alas I probably need to finish off some of the other bits. But yeah, it's just been a really creative, happy week really. And it feels quite nice to just come here and just to check in with you guys to kind of, I don't know, I guess I was contemplating kind of the importance of routines and how we, we love as humans having kind of a, a routine and, and slotting into something. And I think I said on my Instagram last week, I was so, I feel very humbled to be part of people's weekly routine. And in kind of realising that and kind of having that discussion last week, I also realised like, I hope it's okay for me to turn up some weeks not with masses to show but more just to check in with you to kind of say hi and to give you a little bit of insight into what I've been up to it doesn't always have to be finished object finished object finished object <laughs> so that's the hope anyway I've been playing my hair a lot this uh this video so apologies about that guys I'm just not used to having it down and quite so uh, voluminous whilst talking to you um I am probably going to wrap things up here. The very last thing I'll say is a shameless plug, but also kind of a gift to you guys. It's to say that um, the sale on my hand-eyed yarn ends at 11.59 British summer time 
tomorrow on Saturday the 6th of July. So if you were having a think about treating yourself some hand dyed yarn, this might be a really good opportunity. The skeins are coming in at under seven pounds for 50 gram skein. Um, so hopefully that really is a nice a nice treat um, and just as a reminder that or not a right reminder rather a kind of clarification from my last video um, so I mentioned in the last video that my advent calendars were going live they have thank you so much for the support on those already um, I said in the video that I would do two options to pay now or pay in installments having gone then to make the um, listings on my website live it became apparent that when, although the website provider says that they can do instalments, those are through a third party provider. And having read the terms and conditions, I did not feel that their terms and conditions met with the way I would like to treat my customers. And so with that in mind, what I have essentially done is to say, I'm gonna leave the listings open until September and I will die as many advents as people want. Now that's quite an open-ended commitment. It could mean I have a very, very busy winter, but that hopefully means that people can choose to spend some time saving the money in the kind of way they would have done installment payments um, without worrying that they're gonna miss out on an advent calendar. That is the hope. So apologies that there was some kind of misinformation in my last episode, that was not the intention, um, but I, I really want to make sure that I am partnering with third party providers and doing business in a way that for me is moral and fair and treats my customers the way I'd want to be treated and the terms that were on those third party payment providers just was not fair. So that's where we're up to guys. Um, with that, I will wish you a very, very lovely weekend, a very good week. I will be back again, similar time next week, Thursday or Friday. And I will see you then, but yeah, have a good one. Stay safe.